This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. I am Forrest Frosty Crummel, the transitional and interim pastor of St. Paul United Church of Christ, welcoming you to this Advent virtual worship service, a time when we recall the promise of Christ's return into this world to redeem the world. In the coming weeks, we will be celebrating the Advent journey to Christmas Eve and to Christmas itself. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this room, broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. We say that we have no sins we are deceiving only ourselves and the truth is not in us but but if we're willing to confess our sin then god who is faithful will forgive us and restore us in our broken relationships let us come before god in the spirit of confession god of love and justice we long for peace within and peace without we long for harmony in our families and for serenity in the midst of struggle and for the commitment to each other's growth we long for the day when our homes will be a dwelling place for your love. And yet we confess that we are often anxious. We do not trust each other and we harbor violence. We are not willing to take the risk that, and make the hard choices that love requires. Look upon us with kindness and grace and rule in our homes and in all of the world. Show us how to walk in your paths through the mercy of your Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. When we come before God with penitent hearts, then God, who is faithful, will forgive us. And as forgiven brothers and sisters, let us too learn how to forgive and let us vow not to return evil for evil or reviling for reviling. But as much as it depends upon us, may we walk peaceably with our brothers and sisters and everyone in this world. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. In 1858, German settlers organized the St. Paul German Evangelical Church in Pekin, Illinois. The first worship services were held in the homes of its members. The hymn, All Glory Be to God on High, is the first hymn in the German hymnal and was likely sung every Sunday. Bye. Uh -huh. 
Today's gospel lesson comes from the gospel of St. Luke, from the second chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. When the angels had left the shepherds and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has, been, that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned to glorify and praise God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them by the angels. May God add understanding to the reading of that word. Amen. The text for today comes from the 19th verse of that passage I just shared with you. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? May those things said today that are true and be engraved upon every heart, and anything said that is false be quickly forgotten and cause no harm. In your name we humbly pray. Amen. For a number of years I have been haunted by Mary's words in in the text of today but mary kept these things pondering them in her heart i've oftentimes wondered what these things were these things that hopefully gave her comfort years ago i had a parishioner whose name was nancy she was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia this was in the days before bone marrow transplants became more common. This was in the pioneer stages of the development. And doctors tested families and relatives to see if they could find a suitable match. Preparation for the transplant was always brutal. They would receive blood transfusions, but the threat of a host versus graft or a graft versus host was very real. 
Nancy was the mother of four and was rightfully very frightened at what she knew lay ahead. We talked many times. One day, though, she stopped by my office at church and she stood in the doorway and she had this certain aura about her. It was almost mystical. I could see it. I asked how she was doing and she told me that Jesus had come to her that night in a dream. He told me that I was going to be all right, Nancy said. He didn't say if I would live or die. He just said that I would be all right. How did that make you feel, I asked her. I have this peace, she said, that I never had before, this this peace in which I am no longer afraid. I told her that I thought that she had had a mystical experience where heaven and earth touched, or as the Scots would say, she experienced one of the world's thin places where heaven and earth met. I also told her that what she had experienced was a gift and that one that she should hang on to in the coming days, especially when things became more and more difficult. A few months later, Nancy died. Host versus graft disease won her earthly battle, but she died with a sense of peace that passes all human understanding. And her family is indeed doing all right. They mourned and adjustments were made, but they had been blessed with so many happy memories. Sometimes memories fill our hearts with joy. Sometimes they weigh our hearts down with sadness. I imagine that Mary, in our gospel lesson, experienced both. From the beginning, she knew that her son had a special destiny, but she did not have any sense as to how difficult the road to that destiny would be. I wonder, I guess, that that is the way it is with all memories, isn't it? In Charles Dickens' novel, A Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge is haunted by past memories. At exactly the stroke of one after midnight, the ghost of Christmas past appeared to him, and in that kairos time, that eternal heavenly time that the psalmist spoke of when he said that a thousand years are but a day in your sight, O Lord, the ghost took Scrooge to scenes from his youth. The first scene, or memory, that he revisited was that of being at boarding school where his father had sent him for some unknown reason. In this scene, we see a young Scrooge all alone at a holiday time, presumably Christmas. He sat in a darkened room, and his only friends were the characters of the books that he read, Alibaba and Robinson Crusoe and his man Friday. The second scene that Scrooge is shown is at that same boarding school, but a door opens and a little girl, not much younger than Scrooge himself, bound in, throwing her arms around his neck, saying, Dear, dear brother, I have come to bring you home. Home, home, home. Home, little fan? Scrooge asked. Yes, home for good and all. Home forever and ever. Father is so much kinder than he used to be that home is like heaven. And so Scrooge, that lonely boy left behind at the holiday, opened a new chapter in his life story. Scrooge has shown two other scenes. They're not only the wounds that he suffered, but also the choices that he made that contributed to those self-inflicted wounds. The first scene is of him enjoying a Christmas Eve dance in the home of his employer, Mr. Fezziwig. It was there that he met the love of his life, Belle, the woman who would be his future fiance. In this relationship, he experienced the riches of life and of love And as Scrooge enjoyed the memory of the ghost of Christmas past, commented about Fezziwig's small gesture of having this Christmas Eve party or reception. 
It was, the ghost said, such a small matter to make these silly folks so full of gratitude, throwing Scrooge's own words back at him. Small, Scrooge responded. Old Fezziwig spent but a few pounds of your mortal money, the ghost reminded him. Three or four pounds, perhaps. Is that so much that he deserves this praise? It isn't that, spirit, Scrooge reflected. He has the power to render us happy or unhappy, to make our service light or burdensome, a pleasure or a toil. The happiness that he gives is quite as great as if it cost a fortune. In the next and final scene, which happened a few years later, we see Scrooge and Belle once again, but something is different. Belle confronts Scrooge that he has changed, that he had become a man of business, in her words. Then she says to him, another idol has replaced me, and if it can cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, I have no reason to grieve. What idol? Scrooge asked. A golden one, Bell replied. You fear the world too much. All your other hopes have merged into the hope of being beyond the chance of sordid reproach. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall aside one by one until the master passion gain engrosses you. And with those words and that insight, Bell released him from his pledge of marriage. Scrooge sought comfort in the arms of the spirit of materialism, the golden calf, around which the Israelites danced when faith became too hard to maintain. The memories that we have remind us that things have been different before and can be different again. Memories are made day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment. Here's a different memory of a story that I read as told by Dr. Ron Jackson. I was a young girl at a St. Jude's Ranch for Children. St. Jude's Ranch is a home for children who cannot live with their families be because of severe abuse or neglect. They can never go back to their homes, and so St. Jude becomes their home and their family. One year, a little girl lovingly made and wrapped Christmas gifts for her entire family. She mailed them and was so excited when, when she received a box in return. But when she opened the box, she saw that it contained all of her gifts unopened. Dr. Jackson reflected that some wounds cut very deep. Our memories are what they are and we can't change them. But, but they can be redeemed. At St. Jude's Ranch, that little girl learned what unconditional love was. She found herself in a safe place where you can bring your hurt and your brokenness through the staff, the residents, and counseling. She learned to trust God and to forgive her family for their own brokenness, their own hurt and harm. She learned to trust again. She learned to laugh and to play. And today she is a healthy, happy, productive young woman. Sometimes people who have suffered much come to understand much and love much. This is especially true if they do not turn inward into themselves. In John's Gospel, Jesus talked about God's saving and redeeming love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might find life through him. Redeem the past. Go out into the world, returning no one evil for evil or reviling for reviling. Learn how to forgive as freely as God in Christ has loved and forgiven you. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting. It means being freed from the chains 
that bind us. It means giving up our right for revenge and moving on. It means being respectful and treating others the way that we would ourselves wish to be treated. It means learning the lessons of the past, living in the future, living in the present, and looking forward to a future in Christ. Amen. God, we ask that Jesus Christ might come into our hearts and into this world and redeem our past. Give us a vision that sees beyond this world of sight and sound so that we can catch glimpses of the eternal. Heal our hurts and enable us to be healing agents for the hurts of others and the brokenness of this world. We pray as Jesus once taught his disciples so, so long ago, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God that will never let you go, the peace of Christ that passes all human understanding, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that knits us together as the body of Christ be with you today, tomorrow, and every day of your life. Amen. <music>